guys my name is ankush kaurav and i welcome you to con2 series in the previous tutorial we learned how to test this rest api in other words we learned how to test this rest api controller method so overall what we did we made a put request on this rest api and then we specified along with the request the message in the json format with which we wanted to update john's record which is present at the server and along with this we also specified content type headers value as application slash json and why we specified its value as application slash json because this message whatever we have uh, included along with the request is actually present in the json format so now when i'm going to press send what's going to happen this request body annotation is simply going to check the value of content type header when it's going to find its value as application slash json it's simply going to make use of json related jars which we have uh, put on the class path of this project to convert this json message into its equivalent java object that is student object and when I'm going to specify here this whole message in the XML format, then I have to choose here content types value as application slash XML. So now when I'm going to press send, what's going to happen? Well, in this case, request body annotation is uh, going to check the value of content type header. When it's going to find its value as application slash XML, it's going to use XML related jars which we have put on the class path of this project to convert this XML message into its equivalent Java object, that is this student object. And all that, whatever I've just described in a very brief manner, I explained in detail in the last tutorial. Now let's proceed further and try to learn some kind of advanced concepts related to request body annotation and its working. Because if you observe, this whole Spring MVC project supports two formats, XML as well as JSON format. And why it supports these two formats? Because we have put the related jars for these formats onto the class path of this project. So these jars we included for supporting JSON format. This jar we included to support XML format. So the idea is, Whatever formats this Spring MVC application supports, this REST API controller method also supports all those formats, what application supports. And that's the reason here client is able to specify this message in the XML or in the JSON format or whatever format this application supports. Now, what if we have a very specific requirement that we want this REST API controller method to support only one format means here we want to restrict the client to specify this message in only one format and not more than one formats. So how to do that? Let's say we want this REST API controller method to work in only those cases when the client is specifying this message in XML format only and not in any other format so how to do that well that can be achieved by making use of consumes argument with request mapping annotation so how it works let's understand that you got to write here consumes and its value as media type dot whatever format you want this rest api controller method to support because we want to restrict it to support only XML format. So we would choose its value as application underscore XML underscore value. So now what's going to happen? Because of this consumes argument, we have restricted this REST API controller method to work for only those requests where client has specified the message in only XML format. 
if this is going to find out that uh, the message has come in any other format other than XML, then it's going to simply throw an error. It's not going to work. So this is the kind of restriction we have imposed using consumes argument with request mapping annotation. So let's very quickly check this out. So now because we have specified uh, its uh, value, consumes value as the application underscore XML underscore value. So when I'm going to here specify message in XML, content types value as application slash XML, it's going to work properly. See here, I'm getting the response properly. So it successfully converted XML message into its equivalent Java object. But here, if I specify here the message in JSON format and change here the value from XML to JSON, what's going to happen? Well, what we expect after this change. Now, what we expect is this REST API controller method should throw an error and should not send us a valid response. See here, it's working. It has thrown an error. What it says is, this REST API controller method doesn't support content types value as application slash JSON because it supports only application slash XML because of this consumes argument, right? Now, here if I want to support only JSON, well, in that case, same steps we have to follow. You have to write application underscore JSON underscore value. So now this supports only JSON. So here if I choose JSON, then it's going to work properly. See here, I'm getting the valid response. But now if I choose here, a message in the XML format, and change its value to XML, what's going to happen? Well, what we expect, what we expect is this is now supporting only JSON and what we are sending is XML. So it is not going to process this and it's going to throw an error in this case. So let's very quickly verify this. See, it has thrown an error. So the whole idea is Overall application is supporting more than one formats, but this REST API controller method is restricted to support only one format, or whatever you are going to specify as the value for consumes key. So in this tutorial, we just learned how to restrict a REST API controller method to support only one kind of format to be used by clients while making the request. In the next tutorial, we are going to talk about response entity annotation in detail. All right, guys, a big thank you for learning REST API concepts using Spring MVC framework with me. If you have any feedback or any constructive comment, please provide them below the video or simply write to me on this email ID for all of your queries. Please hit the like button if you really like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, gone to series. And I'm going to catch you in the next part of this tutorial.